Alright guys, so now we can finally start installing the plugins. Now, the plugins, remember, are the actual useful things that Grunt can do. Now, the specific plugins that you want are dependent on what you're trying to do to your project, and they're probably going to be different for every project. I'm not going to talk you through every single plugin because there are thousands of them. I think there are like 5,000 different ones. So I'll just show you guys how to set up one or two but the concept is the same for every single plugin once you know how to set up one you're gonna understand how to set up any of them so anytime you want a plugin from your command line type npm install and every plugin follows the same naming convention it's grunt minus contrib minus the plugin name whatever you know one you found online that you want to use type the plugin name right here now Two of the really easy ones that people use all the time, they're not only easy, but they're really popular, are Uglify. Now, this is a plugin that takes your JavaScript and it minifies it. In other words, it rips out all the white space so the file size is a lot smaller. So, type the name of the plugin you want to install, and then after this, write minus minus save minus dev. Now, hit enter, and that's going to go online find the plugin, download it, install it, and then also add it as a dependency. And I'll show you guys what it did. So again, what it did is it went online, found that plugin, which was right here, downloaded it, installed it, set it up for your project, and it also added it as a dependency in your package.json. I mean, pretty handy for one little line of code in the command line. And again, the dependency just says, hey, we're going to be using Uglify in our project. Now, just so you know, I stick this in your guys' brain, let's go ahead and install one more plugin. So npm install, and remember it's grunt minus contrib. What's another one? I'll do a CSS min, which is essentially the same thing, but for CSS, rips out all the white space and minifies it. So minus minus save and minus dev. So now I'll go do the same thing. All right. So actually, let me clear out that crap. All right. So we can verify that it downloaded all of the plugins that we wanted to boom and set them up looking good. So we have all the plugins, all the tools ready to go. The last thing that we need to say is, hey, Grunt, we need to pretty much give it a set of instructions of what we're trying to do. So in order to do that we're gonna have one last file and that's the grunt file so just right click your main directory and hit new javascript file and you have to name this grunt file dot js so look at this so in here the syntax is always the same again I probably should mention this so this is the file where we're going to be giving Grunt the specific instructions. In other words, when we're done developing our website, everything looks good. We're going to say what plugins we want to use, how we want to use them, any options that we need to give it, and in what order. So for example, if you want to uglify and then minify the CSS, or if we want to um, you know, convert all of our less code to CSS and then minify the CSS, you pretty much give Grunt a bunch of tasks or jobs in here. So the syntax that we use is module dot exports and set this equal to function and as a parameter pass in grunt. Now make sure to add your semicolon and we pass in grunt because later on whenever we're ready to actually run all these grunt commands we're gonna be typing grunt in the command line and that says okay you typed in grunt so inside here whatever code we write in here that's what grunt is going to do so again one last time we're going to make our website just like we would normally we're going to type grunt in the command line and then it's going to do a whole bunch of crap now the jobs that we're going to be creating for grunt grunt calls those tasks okay that word is hard for me to say for some reason tasks so i'm going to try to avoid <laughs> saying that but in order to make a new job or a task then what you do is you type grunt and I'll just show you guys one really easy. This is not one that you would ever really do. I'm just gonna show you guys how to make grunt print something out on the screen. But we're gonna say grunt register task right here. Now inside here, we'll just say D 
default, which means that whenever we type grunt, use this as the default task. Pretty simple because, you know, this is the only one we have so far. And for, if I can type function correctly, function and my parameters, my little curly braces right there, and my semicolon. So we're basically just giving it a default job to do right now. And if you ever want to log something out on the screen, then type grunt log writes and just like write whatever like um, this grunt task is pointless so again whenever we run our grunt command and I'll just do it right now grunt it's gonna go to this file and say okay gonna follow all your instructions what did you tell me to do well you just told me to print out this grunt task is pointless and done without errors now I say that this is actually a pointless task but sometimes you do want to log things out so for example you might want to log out um, let's say that you're gonna minify all your CSS so you're gonna minify it and then you're gonna log out CSS minified successfully or something or um, I don't know like all your less files converted into CSS so if you just want to log a little thing so the user knows what's going on then you can use this right here